Hello everybody, my name is Sam Ben Yaakov and I'm here to present a new design and concept of a switch capacitor uh, DC-DC converter. Let me start off by giving um, acknowledgement to first of all Mr. Alexander Kushnerov who is a master student at the Ben Gurion University and he's been working uh, on this subject and his thesis is really related to switch capacitor converters. Another person who is deeply involved in this um, research and uh, con development of the concept is Mr. Mayor Shashua. He is the CTO of Waves Audio who is actually a partner of this project. The area of switch capacitor DC to DC converters is related in general to power electronics and uh, power conversion systems in which we have a electricity of one form that is transferred to another form. These uh, systems could be either uh, unidirectional or bidirectional uh, transferring energy from one port to another. The power conversion is required in all systems today, or practically all systems, since there are very few uh, cases in which uh, the load is connected directly to the source being uh, either a power line or a battery. The simplest way to regulate a voltage is by a linear regulator in which we have a series element, typically a transistor or MOSFET transistor, that is uh, adjusting the output voltage by actually controlling the difference between the input and the output. In most cases, we can assume that the same current is flowing through the series element and the load, and therefore we have the uh, same current flowing from the input voltage uh, to the load, and this brings out a very simple expression for the efficiency. So inherent in each linear regulator is a efficiency limitation, which is uh, expressed as the output voltage divided by the input voltage. Now, since in a regulator we want uh, to adjust the output while the input is varying, uh, consequently, in most cases, we are going to have a fairly low efficiency. Of course, there are some so-called low dropout uh, linear regulators, l meaning that they can sustain a, low dif a small difference between input and output, this would be the difference V in minus V out, but of course um, the question is what is the real input voltage and you cannot keep it always very close to the output. The most efficient way to convert, convert uh, one voltage to another would be to use a so-called switched inductor. In this case we are, in general uh, terms, um, loading or charging a inductor with energy, and then when the switches are turned to the other direction, we are discharging this energy or part of this energy to the load. By this, we can, uh, we can transfer a controlled amount of energy between input and output, and therefore regulate, regulate the output voltage. It can be shown that this process is lossless, except, of course, for the parasitic losses involving the resistance <coughs> of the switches and uh, resistance of, say, the inductor and other parasitic elements. But in, in its basics, this is a lossless uh, process. Another way to transfer energy from the input to the output would be to use a switched capacitor or sometimes referred to as charge pump. In this case, energy is transferred to a capacitor, to a floating capacitor, and 
in the other position of the switches, this energy is transferred to the load. Shown here is an inverter, but of course, uh, same principle can be used to realize uh, both uh, uh, inverting converters, up converters, or down converters. Unfortunately, this process has losses which are inherent to the process, and this is something that I'm going to expand on, but this will be the main drawback uh, of this approach. Now, consider the fact that energy uh, efficiency is of prime importance, the question is, why is it that uh, switch capacitor converter are still preferred in some cases? And the reason is that it has no magnetic elements, and therefore there's no problem of uh, interference, and uh, also uh, for low power it can be fabricated as an IC, both from the switch's point of view and the capacitors. The disadvantage, as already pointed out, is of course the inherent power losses, and the relatively larger number of switches that no is normally required over the uh, switched inductor case. However, for an IC, this may not be a very uh, limiting factor. Now, the inherent power losses is the subject of this work, and our attempt is to reduce these, but for that we really do un have to understand uh, the reasons for the uh, power losses. Now, as I've already pointed out, uh, switch capacitor DC converters could be designed for up converters, down converters, and in this case I'm showing a uh, doubler and in, in which a capacitor is charged uh, to the input. This is the input. And then uh, by changing the position of the switches, uh, this charge capacitor is placed in series with the input and consequently the output will be twice the input voltage. In this case, uh, we have a, a converter which produces half the input voltage, and this is by um, putting the, co the capacitor fr in series with the input, but in opposite direction, after it's being uh, put in parallel to the load. So when, say, Q2 or, or the phase the clock, phase two of the clock, uh, is on, uh, the capacitor is, is connected to the, uh, to the load, and therefore it assumes the voltage of the load, and then when it is placed uh, in series uh, with the input, then in this case uh, we have uh, the input minus the output equals to the output, which brings out the relationship that the output is the input uh, divided by two. Now, going back to the question of losses, um, it can be easily shown that if we have a capacitor which is uh, starting with a voltage V sub 2 and then connected to a voltage uh, V sub 1, this process entails energy loss. The energy loss can be calculated by looking at the energy of the capacitor before connection, the energy of the capacitor after connection, and the amount of energy that has been transferred to or from uh, the input or the, the voltage source. And the expression delta V square divided by 2 is very uh, typical to the losses of system like this. And what it means is that whenever you have a voltage difference between the capacitor and the uh, voltage source, uh, there will be an energy lo loss proportional to the square of this di difference. The same thing goes for the case in which you have two capacitors, uh, one, connect uh, one charged with a voltage of V sub 1, the other one V sub 2. Again, we find that the energy lost is proportional uh, to the uh, voltage difference square. So when we build a uh, 
converter based on the switch capacitor technology, uh, we have to take into account that there be some energy losses which will increase as the difference between the uh, input voltage and the capacitor voltage and of course the output voltage is changing. Now typically we would like to have a uh, regulation. In the case of regulation we want this about we, the output voltage to be uh, different of course from the input and regulated to a fixed value. This requires some means of control which are typically done by uh, adding a resistance in series to the capacitor and thereby uh, causing a partial charge and discharge of this capacitor to maintain the difference between the input uh, and the output voltage. Unfortunately, this brings again the problem of efficiency because as soon as you, there is a difference between the input and the output, um, the efficiency of course will go down. Now, of course, the uh, efficiency is a function, as I've said, it's a function of the output voltage and what we call the target voltage. And I'm introducing here already cases in which the output is not necessarily equal to the input, but the output target voltage may be like a multiple or half uh, the input voltage. Now, target voltage just can be uh, made uh, to be like quarter, three quarters, and there are of course many other combinations possible, and this is done by involving a number of capacitors. For example, if you have three capacitors, as in this case, and the three are connected in parallel in one phase uh, to the output, and then put in series, then we have, uh, we are subtracting from the input three, ve three voltages which are equal to the output, and this uh, in the steady state will cause the output voltage to be uh, one quarter of the input voltage. And of course we can get some other ratios like the, uh, uh, like three quarter and many other ratios. Here we see a commercial uh, unit. It's a microlinear LTC1911, which is a switched capacitor regulator. And shown here are the performance in terms of efficiency. In the case of a output voltage which is 1.8 volts and varying input voltage between 2 and 6. Now the target voltages of this unit are 1, and a, one over 2, like half, and 2 thirds. So when the input voltage is related to the output voltage through this ratio, efficiency is expected to be high because the voltage differences between the capacitor and the input and output is small. For example, if uh, the input is around, um, say, uh, 3.6, which is here, uh, we see here a high um, efficiency peak because uh, the ratio, the required ratio is one half, and indeed this uh, converter can be configured to have a one half uh, conversion as a target voltage. However, uh, in if the voltage is changing, I mean the input voltage is changing so that the uh, required ratio is different from one half, a voltage difference develops between the floating capacitor and the input and output and consequently of course the uh, efficiency drops. So the point that is important to realize is that at the target voltages we're going to have fairly high efficiencies because the differences between the voltages that the capacitor sees in the two uh, uh, switch modes are small while if the we are far away from the target voltages, efficiency will drop, and as we can see here, we see efficiencies below 70%. Now, the objective of this project was to develop 
a conversion system that has many target voltages. And the distance between tar these target voltages um, be kept small. By this, we are going to have, or if this can be accomplished, uh, we are going to have a fairly high efficiency all over uh, the output to input ratio because uh, always we are close to a target voltage and at the target voltage, of course, because the capacitor C is small voltage difference, the um, uh, efficiency will be high. The approach taken in this project in order to get the high resolution is to rely on a number system. Uh, we call it the extended uh, binary number representation that has uh, features which are uh, required to get high resolution. Now, once we identify this uh, binary system, uh, we found a way to translate this binary system into a uh, topology of a switch capacitor uh, converter that will follow this sy system. And consequently, we ended up with a uh, performance of a switch capacitor a DC to DC converter that has many uh, target voltages. So I'm going to leave for a while um, the issue of speech capacitor and go uh, for a minute or a few minutes uh, to the question of binary systems, binary numbers, and the uh, extended binary system uh, that we have uh, developed here. Now, we all are familiar with binary numbers, but there is an extension to the regular uh, binary numbers, and that is the binary fraction in which uh, a number smaller than one can be represented as a sum of uh, power of two um, while the power is negative, meaning that we have uh, smaller than one numbers. Now, in this case, we have two coefficients, like in any uh, binary number, uh, 0 and 1, and by selecting, of course, this coefficient, uh, we can get any number uh, smaller than 1 with the resolution which is depend on the number of bits that we are using. Just an example, suppose we would like to express 5, 8, then in this case we have the, f the first, since um, coefficient is 0, then we have 2 to the power of minus 1, which is 1, so this is like half, we have 0 here, and this is 1, uh, 8, and the sum of these two is, of course, uh, 5, 8. Uh, as in the normal binary uh, number representation, we can express this number as a code, as a binary code, having a coefficient or having um, integers of 0 and 1 uh, that represent the coefficient of each uh, term. An extension to the uh, fractional uh, binary number representation is the signed binary number, which in the past has been shown actually for positive powers of 2. And in this case, uh, we have coefficients of the terms which can extend not only to 1 and 0, but also to minus 1. What it brings about is the possibility to represent the same number in different ways. For example, the number 5 can be represented as 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, plus 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, and the code would be 0, 1, 0, 1. However, the same number can be represented differently as 1 to the power of 
1, which is 2, and then 2 to the power, to the power of 2, which is uh, 4, and then in this case we have 2 to the power of 0, but with a minus sign, so we are actually subtracting this term, and therefore we have far 4 plus 2 minus 1, which is again 5, and uh, it is a, a different representation for the same number. The code in this case will include 0, 1, 1, and minus 1, which of course uh, is uh, not found in the regular binary, but it's in the signed binary we found this minus 1. Now, the extended binary representation is, a, is sort of including the fraction part that I've mentioned and also the sign part. We're talking about numbers in the range of 0 to 1. And the representation here includes actually two parts. One is a fixed coefficient and then a, a sum of these uh, binary fraction terms. The first term can take the values 0 or 1. The coefficient of the binary or the fractional binary terms can take the values 1, 0, and minus 1 similar to the signed binary representation. So in this case, uh, a number like uh, 5, 8 uh, can be written, of course, in different ways because it's a signed binary. And let's take an example. It can be written as 2 to the power of minus 1, minus 2. This will be like 1 half. This will be 1 4, minus 1 8. And this is 5 8. And of course, this will be another possibility and another possibility. And the corresponding codes would be as shown here. An important result of this research is providing an answer to the question of how many codes and how many possibilities can be generated for a given fraction. Now, in order to find this number, we start with the regular binary representation or fractional binary representation of the number. As an example, we consider 5 eighths, which is in the regular fractional binary representation will be uh, 2 to the power of minus 3 plus 2 to the power of minus 1, which is half plus 8, which is 5 eighths. Now starting with this, we can, let's go over uh, to this case, starting with a 1 in one column, we can add to it another one, which is basically adding 2 to the power of minus 3 here. Now, this is a regular binary addition, so 1 plus 9 is 0, plus a carry, which is 1 here. However, in order to keep the same value of the number, we have to subtract the, the same value that we have added. And we do it, however, in this case, by adding a negative coefficient here. So minus 1 st stands for minus 1 times 2 to the power of minus 3. So by this, we generated an extra number or extra code for the same value of number 5 to 8. Now repeating this on each of the ones in the code, and on each of the ones that are generated by this process, we end up with a few codes which represent the same numbers. All these codes represent 5 8. The question is, of course, given a certain resolution, that is, a certain number n, how many codes will be generated for each number or each fraction? Now, since we have already said that each of the ones 
will be replaced by a minus one. And then we'll actually, in each zero or place of a zero, we'll generate a one as a carry. Then it turns out that aside from the original value, for each position of this n resolution, we're going to generate an extra code. And consequently, we can say that the total number of codes that uh, can be generated from a given uh, binary number is at least n plus 1. I'm saying at least because it turns out that there are some, uh, in some cases, it's possible to generate extra uh, codes, but this is not important for our uh, discussion here. Another important corollary of um, this uh, generation algorithm or code generation algorithm is the fact that whenever you have a one there's always be at the same column a minus one and this is again is because that one is by is replaced in order to generate other codes by a minus one and consequently if you look at each of the column you'll see uh, both positive and negative ones and this has an implication uh, to the uh, uh, development of the converter or the switched capacitor converter that I'm going to get into uh, fairly quickly. Just to summarize what we have seen here, taking the case of three, of resolution of three, remember A0 is different from A1 to A3. These are the coefficient of the, the to the power of the negative numbers. Uh, this table summarizes all the codes for the ratios you can get in this case, like 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, etc. And these are the corresponding codes. In the case of 1, 8, we see that we have 1, 2, th 3, 4 possible codes. N, in this case, is 3 n plus 1 is 4 and this is exactly what has been predicted. In some cases, like for example in the 5 8, uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 codes and there is an extra code here which again uh, is, is not important. Uh, we, I'll um, refer to it a little bit later. In some cases, we seem to have a limited number of codes, for example for the 4 8. Now the reason for that is that uh, the 4 8 is basically 1 half and to generate 1 half you really don't have a you need a resolution of 3 you, there isn't enough to have a resolution of 1. So in this case the resolution is 1 and, and 1 plus 2 is 2 so we have uh, two equations. Um, Now we go back to the question of switch capacitor converter. We want to generate or to develop a converter which will have many target voltages. We found a way um, to, div to, to have a number which has many, um, let's have a look here, uh, we found a, a way with a resolution of 3 to get all the ratios of 8 between 1, 8 to 7, 8. And now we are going to use this, ex this representation to translate it into a switch mode capacitor uh, converter that of course will have the same features of the code itself. The rules for converting the code to a switch capacitor topology has a number of uh, sequences that we have to uh, follow. The first one is to realize that this number, which is like the, the 3 8 in this case, represent the ratio of the conversion. This will be the target voltage of the converter. 
Now, each of these uh, coefficients now, the n coefficient, is associated with a capacitor. A0 is associated with the input voltage. So this is the input voltage, and this is associated with the capacitor. We have, in this case, for n equal to 3, we have three capacitors. Now, the coefficients of the codes, like 1, 0, for the input part, say whether the input is connected or not. For the 1, for this case, the input is connected. In this case, the input is not connected. For the capacitors, 0, again, means that the capacitor is not connected, while 1 means that it's connected in one direction, and this will be a discharging direction. We'll see it in a minute. While a minus 1 means that it's connected in the opposite direction. So the capacitors are connected in series to the load, and possibly with the input if the coefficient for a given code is 1. So this is actually summarizing the rules that I've already uh, referred to. And in order to really understand what all this thing means, let's have a look at the actual implementation of these rules. We are starting with codes. Each code represents the number or the fraction 3 eighths. Each code is associated with a topology. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 codes, we have 5 topologies here. Each topology follows the connection described by the code. So, for example, if you look at the first line, 1 implies that the input is now connected. Minus 1 implies that the capacitor C1 is connected in such a way that it is charging. And then A2, A, A which is associated with the second capacitor, is 0, meaning that the capacitor for this topology is not connected, while for the third capacitor, it's again connected in a uh, charging position. Obviously, due to the meaning of this code, when you combine V in plus the, volt, the capacitors, you expect to see the number, and this would be correct if the capacitors are charged to the binary weighting uh, ratios. That is, C1 is charged to half the input voltage, C2 is charged to the one quarter of the input voltage, and C3 is charged to one eighth of the input voltage. So in this first case, we have the input voltage minus uh, half of the input voltage and minus one-eighth of the input voltage. And of course, uh, this will be like eight-eighth plus minus four-eighths minus one. And this is... Uh, equal to 3 eighths. The same goes for the other lines or for the, for the other codes. Let's take an example, this particular one. Uh, again, we have one here, so input is connected. In this case, capacitor is connected in the charging direction, capacitor 1, capacitor 2 also, and capacitor 3 in the discharging. In the case when you, we have zero uh, coefficient of the A sub zero, the first term, uh, the, the input voltage is not connected, so this is this case, and as you can see we have just the capacitor connected uh, to the output. Again, C2 is charged by quarter of V in minus plus a uh, one eight, and this is again 
uh, three eighths of uh, V in. So what we found in this research and represented here is that if the capacitors are charged to half V in, quarter, and one eighth, and then they are connected in a topologies which follow follow the code for a given fraction. Here shown for three eight. Of course, we have different codes for the other fractions, like one eighth or five eighths. So then for each connection, the output will be the correct or the required conversion ratio that is uh, in this case, 3 eighths of V. Now, obviously, one would ask uh, two very uh, important questions. Number one is um, whether this system is stable. That is, suppose we are ch charging the capacitors to these voltages and then we are connecting them as shown here. Will they sustain the same voltage or will it change with time, either drop or increase uh, from the required values? Now, as it turns out, uh, this is correct and not only that, we can, we'll show in a few minutes that even if we start this sequence of connection with a uh, capacitor with, uh, with, without any voltage across them, they will eventually stabilize and uh, converge to the required value that is half, quarter, and one-eighth of the input voltage. The reason for this sort of uh, surprising result is that these topologies are basically representing codes. And each code can be uh, shown to represent an equation. And already we have said that we have here n plus 1 code at least. And so we have n plus 1 equations and n plus 1 topologies. Another important result that we have already uh, discussed is that when we go through sec these sequences we find that a given capacitor will be charged in one topology and then discharged in another topology so that we have sequences of charging and discharging and by this uh, there is a at least a chance for the voltage to be retained at the required value and not uh, uh, change or drop to zero. But as I've said, uh, the situation uh, can be shown uh, to be rigorously uh, correct uh, by a, a mathematical terms, providing that we are going through all these sequences uh, and not missing any of them. That is, if we start with, or for the case of 3 eighths, we'll go through all the codes, all the n plus 1 codes, and then start again with n plus 1 codes. Uh, we are going to retain uh, the value of the capacitor voltage and of course at that time we are going to have an output voltage which is 3 eighths of the input voltage. So is there a unique solution and is this solution the required value of voltages across the capacitor and what happens if um, we start with a capacitor which has zero voltages and will they maintain the voltage uh, during transient or change of load? Now, the answer to this question is actually the set of these algebraic equations. 
one can look at each one of these connections as an analog representation of an equation that says that the input vol voltage plus the voltage of the capacitor connected is equal to the output voltage. And this would be this line. Another topology which corresponds to another line in this code is another equation. So by going through all these topologies in sequence, we are forcing the capacitors to obey this set of equations. And the question is, of course, whether these equations do have a solution, and what is the solution of this equation? Luckily, we have enough equations. The number of unknown is the voltage on the capacitor plus the output voltage, which we, at this stage, assume that it is unknown. What we know is the input voltage and the way the capacitors are connected with the output in series. Now, by manipulating this equation and normalizing it, we can get a matrix uh, expression or form of this equation in which x sub 1 and 2 to 4 are actually normalized value and this is the, the uh, normalized to the input voltage. Now, for a linear equation of this form, according to a theorem by Kronecker and Capelli, um, there's going to be a unique solution if the rank of the original matrix is equal to the rank of the um, augmented matrix and uh, when the rank is equal to the number of unknowns. Now, an augmented m matrix is, a, is the original ma matrix plus the column of the B matrix. This is the original matrix, and this is the solution matrix, and we add it to this matrix, and this is the augmented ma matrix. As it turns out, for all the combinations for the extended binary um, representation, uh, all of them obey this theorem and it implies that there is a unique solution and this solution is indeed the expected one. Well, here are the capacitor voltages and this is the output ratio, I mean the output to input voltage ratio. It can thus be concluded that by following the topologies of the um, extended binary uh, code, the capacitor will end up having the voltage according to the binary weight, and the output will resume the value of the um, code that the topologies are following. It is interesting to note that by switching the uh, meaning of input and output, that is, if we connect a voltage source to what was up to now the input terminals, I mean the output terminals, and put the load at the terminal that were up to now called the input terminal, we get the same set uh, of equations with switched um, meaning of input and output, and of course uh, this set of equation has also a solution which implies that the same configuration of capacitors can be used for step up also. So we have the way to uh, boost the an input voltage to a higher voltages following of course one over this uh, fractional value. That is, in the step down, we'll get 
three eight of the input, while in the step up we'll get eight third uh, of the input voltage. To implement the concept, we do need uh, switches that can connect the capacitors in the required uh, position and with the input and the and the load. And in this uh, uh, project, we have uh, used a uh, discrete uh, semiconductor switches, um, rather than, of course, developing a, uh, v a dedicated uh, ASIC for the purpose. And the basic configuration that is needed is a sort of a bridge across the capa each capacitor that will enable the connection of the capacitor in uh, uh, either positive or negative uh, direction. So for a resolution of three, that is three capacitors, uh, we have uh, 12 switches which are required. The system was built um, using a bidirectional uh, switches, which are the Maxim analog switches. Uh, this is actually the relevant part to the switch capacitor converter. This part is basically a sensing part just for the purpose of debugging and analyzing uh, the performance. And the system, the experimental system, was driven by a, a microcontroller, a PIC, and here are the lines coming off the microcontroller through drivers which uh, operate the um, switches. Uh, the system will beat, will, will beat for a high number of capacitors. Uh, the um, result that I'll show you is for uh, three capacitors. Here is a uh, example of a uh, startup sequence. This is simulation. And this is experiment. In this case, uh, the ratio was set to 3.8. Again, the, the system was changing the topologies according to the requirement of the 3.8 uh, code, going from one topology to another. And starting from zero output and zero input and zero output, here is the um, startup sequence, and we see that within uh, like a few millivolts, uh, milliseconds, excuse me, uh, the system is reaching steady state. The efficiency for a, each given uh, transfer ratio that is set by the, of course, connection of the uh, capacitor is as expected high because uh, we are at the target voltage. We have a target voltage of 3.8, so for this ratio, uh, the efficiency is high, and the same thing goes for another target ratio, which is 5.8. Now, obviously, uh, the resistance of uh, the switches, as well as parasitic effect, uh, will cause dropout, especially for low uh, load resistances. This is an experimental uh, system in which the uh, resistance of the switches was uh, fairly high. Now, the efficiency, again, going back to the question of efficiency, can be analyzed by considering a simple equivalent circuit for the uh, switched capacitor converter, which is pretty much similar to the uh, linear regulator, in which we have a source, which is the target voltage, and the internal resistance, which is a function of, among other things, uh, the value of the capacitors and the resistance of the switches. Efficiency, again, will be um, output, the real output voltage over the, the target voltage. Now, the key to the efficiency at the target voltage for a given load will be, of course, the value of our equivalent, because it will 
have a voltage drop ac across this and consequently a difference between the output and the target voltage. Now, we have examined the uh, equivalent resistance of our experimental system um, and compared it to what would be expected from theoretical basis. In order to extract the value of uh, this resistance, one can carry out experiments for different R outs and considering that the output voltage is just the uh, a function of the input voltage, like the source, and a voltage divider, uh, by rearranging it, one can express the term of input voltage times output uh, load, I mean the load, and the uh, output voltage, which is all are known as a linear function of R out, which is also known, and R equivalent, which is, of course, uh, still unknown. And by plotting this linear expression, uh, one can get this value here, which is, uh, of course, will be for y equal to 0 minus the intersection with the x, which is this value. So by carrying out this experiment and plotting the data uh, using this linear uh, regression, uh, we obtained a value for the uh, internal resistance of our experimental unit to be about 7 ohms. Now this is consistent with the values of capacitor that have been used and the fact that the resistance of the switches that were used are, is uh, 1.2 ohms. Now one should bear in mind that uh, of course we have a number of switches in series, in series for each case and consequently the total resistance is indeed uh, higher. Now what about regulation? Obviously uh, in a practical application one may wish to uh, regulate the voltage to a given value uh, which might be off uh, the target voltage. Now we have examined in this study two approaches. One is the dittering that is moving from one ratio to another and the other one is the linear regulator. For the dit dittering case uh, we obtain a transfer ratio which is in between the target voltages by repeating the sequences corresponding to one target voltage and then having a sequence of another target voltage. These, all these are codes of the 4-8 topology. So by weighing the contribution of each part we get a ratio which would be different or can be different from each one of the in individual contributors and by changing this ratio we can get of course uh, regulation. Uh, this is for example a output, uh, a zoom on the output voltage for a continuous uh, ratio and a dittered ratio and here we see dittering between 3.8 and 4.8 in 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, the reason for the higher uh, uh, ripple here, this is uh, by the way 10 millivolt uh, per division resolution, uh, is that uh, we are moving from one configuration to another and, and therefore there is some disturbance uh, in the system. Another way to get regulation is to introduce a linear regulation in between the output of the switch capacitor converter and the load. By adjusting the voltage drop across the, the linear regulator to be about the value of the LSB, we can then regulate the voltage in, bin in between the two, uh, or, or two target voltages this is, uh, of course, will cause, this will cause some uh, efficiency drop, as would ex be expected, but 
uh, in any case, if we need a output voltage which is, which is different from the target uh, voltage, then one would expect to have some losses. By having a linear regulation, though, we can reduce the ripple at the output and have a smooth regulation uh, over uh, a larger range by changing, of course, the target voltages of the uh, switch capacitor part. To summarize uh, what has been uh, detailed in this presentation, uh, we have developed a uh, high efficiency, a wide range uh, switch capacitor uh, converter by basing it on a uh, binary, a fractional binary uh, sequences. The binary resolution gives us a fairly close uh, uh, spread of uh, the target voltages. The downside, of course, is uh, the relatively larger number of switches that are required in order to get all these configurations. Uh, aside from what has been uh, presented here, uh, we have studied and we do have data on other issues like the question of uh, convergence and uh, a more theoretical in-depth uh, study on the losses and also we do have a uh, means to reduce the ripple by uh, choosing a specific uh, sequence that uh, the topologies are changing from one, to one state to another. This brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you for very much for your attention. Okay, are there uh, any questions, please? Okay, I'll um, uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, she's a good one. I'll, I'll uh, repeat it just uh, in case it was not recorded properly. The question was whether we do have to go throughout, through, through all the sequences, especially when we do have some redundancy here, because as we have said, that there is a need for uh, n plus one codes in order for the system uh, to be solvable. And here we have an extra code, and the question is whether we do have to go through all the codes. And the answer is that, in fact, uh, in our uh, study, we found out that there is a advantage in, in using some additional codes by repeating some of the basic codes. Now, the reason uh, for the advantage in, in doing that is that for minimum ripple, you will have, you would like to have a sequence of charging, discharging, and then preferably charging again. So by spreading out this, the sequences and plugging in uh, additional, repeating some of the sequences, it turns out that one can get a uh, situation in fact, in, in the particular case of n times 3, we have a 8-length uh, sequence in which for each capacitor, we're going to have a charge-discharge-charge-discharge char charge, uh, sequence, which will, of course, uh, minimize the ripple uh, by not leaving the capacitor in one uh, position, like just charging and then for a number of sequences and then discharging. So uh, there is a uh, advantage in using all the uh, possible codes and in fact adding some and uh, rearranging it in such a way that it will have a charge-discharge um, sequence. Is there another question? That's Chuck. Uh, looking at the sequence tables that uh, you're showing here, uh, one can see that uh, there are cases uh, well, less equations than n minus one. Uh, n plus one. N plus one. Uh, can you comment? Okay. Well, if we look at uh, a, a the case of uh, say uh, um, four eight, for example, uh, this is indeed the case. 
and uh, I think I'm, I mentioned it, but it's important to realize that uh, 4 8 is in fact a case in which the resolution is only one half. That is, although uh, showing here are the two extra terms, but the resolution is only one half so that there is a need for one capacitor to carry out this uh, ratio. In fact, this is the case in which you have a capacitor which is uh, connected in parallel to the load and then put in series uh, with the input. And in this case, since there is a need to uh, maintain the voltage of only two element, that is the voltage of the capacitor and the output voltage. So we do need only two equations, and indeed we do have these two equations. Okay, thank you very much for your attention again.